Hi folks, welcome back to The Garage. Now this is a very quick one, I've got to do an adjustment on the high boost today. Me and Penny Fitz are going to have a little ride this evening. Um, mostly in practice for the weekend, we've got a hundred and, well, 300 mile round trip at the weekend to Brightona and uh, she's going to come on the back of the Starship Enterprise there. Not going to take the Harley purely because it's a long old haul um, and the economy really. It's going to cost us a lot less money to just run the high booster there and back than run two bikes there and back even more than twice as much because the Harley uses quite a bit of fuel. So, going to have a little test ride tonight for Penny Pitstop Wonder Girl on the back, see how she likes it. Uh, but before we do that, as I mentioned the other day in the last video, I've got this fork wheel alignment thing in the front going on. So I want to show you how to do that. It's a little quick how-to. So it's how to align your forks. Very straightforward. Um, simple explanation of what goes wrong is if you're in a pothole or bumping up curbs does it pretty badly. If you bump the front wheel up the curb, what happens is the, the two forks that sit in the yokes, I mean, okay, yokes, triple trees, triple clamps, call them what you like. For the purposes of today, we'll call them yokes. Now, the two yokes that hold the fork legs, they, they swivel independently of, of each other in, in their mountings. And that means that the fork legs can kind of do this, which puts the wheel out of line with the steering. Um, so, obviously, we've got to get that right. It's a little bit off on the Hayabusa. I'm just going to show you how to do it. It's very straightforward, very simple. And you'll be surprised, you ride up the road, you know when it's wrong, you kind of feel it, and then, or it's to the right, or whatever. So let's show you how we get it right. Stick around, stay tuned. All right, here we are, Hayabusa of Doom now. The, let's get this out of the way. Need a bigger garage right now. I want to show you this. First of all, I'll try it right away. Now, when we look at the bike, if we look down the line, you can see straight away that that is pretty much, just kick it straight, that's pretty much in line. Everything on there, lines up. That's correct. That's the front wheel pointing forward. You can just see it. If you stand back, you probably can't see it on video. When you stand back and you take a look side to side and you just flick your eyes side to side, everything lines up symmetrically, everything's straight. Now, when we come around to the bars, and this is how I bought the bike, I'm gonna jump up on it. It's on the stand. Now, check out the bars. You can see it. I can see it immediately. I could feel it riding home in the dark and I didn't even see it. If we put the bars straight, you can see they're just off to the left. Now, if we put the bars straight and it's as little as that, there, that's now correct. That's now straight. But, obviously, what that's done, there you go, clearly thrown the wheel out. And all it means is that wheel's just got pushed that side. You bump up a curb at an angle, you give an impact on the tyre this side, that's enough to just tweak it out. Because remember, everything's only held by pinch bolts, just friction, that's all it is. And that friction's never that much. You don't want it to be that much because you don't want to start stripping your, your, top, your top or bottom yoke out by over tightening it. So it's got to be done every now and again. This alignment's got to be checked and that is clearly off. I would imagine if we work it out. Now, if we go back to where it was, which is there, that's about, I don't know, if you look at it, say on a clock face, about two minutes to 12 which if you take it to a proper degrees, that's six degrees off. And that's too much, you can definitely feel it. So, this is what we do. Straighten out, I'll show you. Okay, difficult to see on this bike, clearly, but this view gives you it perfectly. This is top clamp, top yoke, top tree, whatever you wanna call it, and it's clamped here, with that single one pinch bolt, just the one. It's also held with this nut in the center. That stops that one swiveling independently of the bottom one. Well, it grips it anyway. And down here, you've got these two. There's not just one, but they're piggybacked one above the other because that bottom yoke does all the work. That's the big tough one. Now, when they machine that hole through that yoke or cast it, whatever, it's machined straight. When they make the forks, they're made straight. Everything is made, manufactured, straight. So it isn't meant to be, bolt, uh, to, to be bent and it will be easy to straighten it up. You can see it down that side too. So we have to loosen off that bolts, or those bolts, those bolts. We have to come on down. We have to loosen off these two at the front, which are clamps round the axle. We have to loosen off those two, and then pull the axle out slightly itself. We just have to turn the axle just to loosen it. Now we're not actually undoing anything, we're just cracking them, releasing them, and letting their grip go. We're also gonna release the bolts that hold the front fender because that has an element of friction. These are bolted in, in a way 
that that is moving that it doesn't move so effectively those the friction of those that's one piece of plastic effectively between the two forks you need the two forks to move independently of other, each other now so they can realign and that piece of plastic will also be stopping them as much as all these others so we release the fender as well and finally we also crack off the caliper bolts not really for any other reason than it just makes everything nice and released so in a nutshell we are releasing every single bolt south of this one leave that one done up otherwise the forks will shoot up through the yokes and the bike will slam on the ground they have to stay where they are we hold basically we hold everything by the top one and then we release everything south of that so I'm going to get stuck in and start loosening everything off and then we can start straightening up right now this is a little bit of a mess as you can see with a bike with a fairing like this getting up there is the job I can't really show it because I can't even see it myself you're kind of groping around it there in the dark now what I'm using, I just want to show you this, I'm just using a little quarter drive with a 12mm six sided socket, which is what it is. Always use six side because they grip better than 12s. Um, and a little tiny handheld thing, and I just do it like that. And my view is, if I can undo them with this, then I do them up with this, and they don't need to be any tighter. Now, really, I can't see anything up there. Right, there they are. Oh, damn. Anybody got some borrowers I can ask and lend? Okay. Right, that's got that one on. Now, if I can just crack that. There we are. That wasn't even tight. Typical. I've had this little mantra for years, and it's even stood me the test of time when I buy brand spanking new bikes that have been PDI by the dealer. You always find something on your bike that's not right yeah now all I've done with those bolts I've just backed them out I would say no more than one turn and the reason for that is you don't want them hanging right out because they only want to be loosened off there so the test is lift up there with your fingers if they move with your fingers that's correct and then just wind them back in with your fingers till they seat that's that loose now do the other side Okay, that's both of those backed off. Now this is the, these are the pinch bolts that pinch the fork leg, this fork knuckle, round the axle to hold the axle still. And they are never that tight, they should never be that tight. Because the two bolts there between them have got enormous power, enormous pinching power as it were, and they don't need to be that tight. What you do is you do them up reasonably tight, then mark them like we do the old nail varnish trick. Because if you do these up too tight, you'll literally shear it here, you'll crack that. I've seen that happen, uh, where this just fractures across there. And that is a world of expense, because you're looking at a new fork leg, or at least the new knuckle at the bottom. These shouldn't be any more than... I haven't touched these yet. There we are. Just wrist tight. I have not tacked... That's it. If you don't do everything up, you don't hang off things like orangutan all the time you won't break things you won't strip threads all right now this is one of those special tools you go and get a 24 mil allen key great big enormous sort of socket thing you can buy or you can use your common sense 24 mil nut which will just go in there it's kind of a two-hand job as they say but all i'm going to use is a socket on that it is two hands to get it. There it is. Oh, it's popped in. Right, let's put you down. Alright, got it now. Now what you do with the axle, oops, is probably back it out literally a quarter of a turn. All you're doing is undoing the thread from this side in there, just so that it's not tight and it isn't pinched, so that it's not under pressure. And finally, carefully not scratch your paintwork, because it's not a rat bike. Just crack these, release the grip. So like I said, everything south of the top clamp needs to be loosened off. Every single fastener you can come across. If you've got uh, regular forks, which have got a fork brace, like a bandit has got, then you need to undo that as well. If in doubt, take it off. Doesn't hurt. So all these are getting about literally 
undo them until they're completely loose then just wind them back in and sit them against this seat with your fingers or like that so it's out wind it back in until it stops and there's a reason why it's, it, that you do it that way so that it's when it comes to do it all up it's very straightforward so finally I've put the front wheel on a sheet of stainless and the reason for that is it moves around dead easy okay final uh, this nut here big 28 okay, everything's undone uh, quickly get back up on top of the bike this helps when you've got a paddock stand um, because you can keep the forks upright and, and the simple trick now once everything's undone is just plunge it up and down so that everything self-centers all you've got to do both hands on top of the yoke get over above it and press down so what I mean is get over it and press down don't press forward don't press the forks in the direction they're going get above them so the forks are in that angle and press downwards and it causes everything to realign so get up above them two or three solid plunges downwards that's perfect let me show you try and get up the top bars are about bang on now there we are it is as simple as that now all we've got to do they're now set straight everything is straight it's self-centered nicely so all I've got to do now is from the top down from these bolts here downwards one by one side by side just a quarter of a turn nip 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 each side going each side all the way down so that everything's tightened up don't tighten one bolt right up all down one side then expect to do the other because it will twist it so do one bolt quarter of a turn quarter of a turn then come down again come down again so you gently do it all up without throwing anything out of line and try not to maul the wheel about obviously because it's all loose so I'm going to tighten this up and we'll check it after right now that's all the fasteners done up and checked so as you can see that's straight perfectly in line you may not be able to see it exactly from here but the little ridge in the center of the tire picks up perfectly with the headlight that is completely in line you're never going to get it exact by eye but that certainly is exactly where it was and they are now dead in the middle now I've got the key slot lining up with the little line down here in the fairing which everything lines up you've got the two little clock displays the buttons everything lines up straight line whereas it was off so there we are so the rear paddock recap. stand is the best possible way because if it's on a side stand it ain't never going to work it's twisted it's hanging gravity's going to pull it one way it will fail do it on a paddock stand if you haven't got one get a friend to hold the grab rail and don't move get him to stand behind the bike hold the grab round and play statues for 10 minutes because that's the only way plunge it up and down it will central and then your bike will ride straight up the road won't go in a hedge so there you go fork alignment it ain't hard is it um just unbolt everything south of that top one and then do it all back up in order it's very very simple i reckon you should do that to your bike once a year anyway it's a simple task it doesn't take long and it makes everything straight again wheel alignment is something else that's aligning the back wheel side to side with the front wheel Fork alignment is aligning the forks with the handlebars so that they are completely 90 degrees to each other. Uh, there are tools you can buy, there's specialist equipment you can buy, but you know me, it ain't ever needed. Do it yourself. So that's it. Whether it's a Hayabusa or a Harley Davidson, it doesn't matter. It's the same nuts and bolts. Just get it done, making sure it's safe. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in and watching the Boys Garage. I have got to get the Hayabusa now ready for its VIP passengers this evening. Uh, grab rail, back seat, tyre pressures, the usual checks. I did that in the other video. Make sure you always do them. Thanks for the comments, thanks for all the support, I always appreciate it, I'll see you next time.